Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And it's Tuesday night, and we've got a seven-game slate here for you guys. In this one, we're taking a look at the battle of Crypto.com Arena, the Clippers and Lakers taking each other on there. We've also got another game video and our player props for you as we do each and every weekday, so make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Also want you to head to thelines.com. That's where we have all of our great written content about the NBA this season. And you can use our odds finder tool up there. That's where we have uh, all of those U.S. sportsbooks offered for you guys so you can compare those odds get the best juice back on all these nba bets you're making nate let's get into this seven game slate and then talk clips and lake show yeah the bulls pulled out a win over the hawks last night they're minus two at the halliburtonless pacers tonight the celtics lost in orlando they're plus three at miami marcus smart malcolm brogdon could come back after sitting last night uh, the other game we break down here is Cavs minus three and a half at the Knicks. The totals fluctuated a lot. It's at 220 right now. Nuggets minus one at the Pelicans, despite uh, Zion still out. That's because Jokic is questionable. Um, MPJ and Bones Highland might also not play for Denver. Washington plus seven at the Mavs. No Porzingis, no Christian Wood. The Hornets are plus six and a half at the Suns, who appear to be getting right a little bit here. And then Clips. Open at minus three and a half. It's now minus five. Total open at 233. It's now 230. Uh, and those are, I, I think I agree with the public on both of those bets um, in terms of clips to win and this game to go under. I mean, we've been talking for a while about the Lakers slowing it down and going under. And, and they snuck under the under. I mean, the last one was pretty far under the under, actually, against Portland. But they snuck under against Memphis. Under in six of their last seven. The exception is Houston. And, and that's just an anomaly. Um, the their pace was at 96 in four games before this Memphis ridiculousness, which included 41 free throw attempts for the Lakers, 41 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, and I just don't think that'll be the case against these, these two teams, the Lakers and Clippers, are ninth and 11th in fourth quarter points allowed the last uh, week here and um, I mean they've defended each other very well actually the, the Clips of course we know have won nine straight you just look at the last four here uh, three of the four have gone under the the Lakers have just a 103 offensive rating scoring just 103 per game uh, the pace pretty slow the Clips slightly better at 113 points per game because they hit threes and the Lakers cannot I mean that is the biggest discrepancy here the Lakers are one of the worst three-point shooting teams out there, and I don't really see that correcting here. Um, and, and the only reason they were even close to their their totals here the last couple games, Josh, is because of absurd second halves, right? I mean, the huge run against Portland, the um, the explosion in the fourth against Memphis, they're scoring 68 in the second half over their last three here. Uh, but you're going up against the Clippers and Tyron Lu, who is not – the type of coach to just to get worse defensively as the game goes along. In fact, much, much better is what the Clippers usually get. Um, and, and he seems to have a little bit of a, of a recipe for defending LeBron. I mean, it helps that you have great uh, individual defenders in, in Kawhi and PG. Kawhi barely has played against the Lakers, but you go back before his injury. LeBron is getting 21 points per game with rough shooting splits, a 103 offensive rating in his last six against Kawhi. We all remember the famous meme in the finals uh, a decade ago, right, where he sees Kawhi come back on the floor and just mouse. Uh, and, and is and just and with just mostly just PG and no Kawhi, still only a 106 rating for LeBron. We know he's carrying the Lakers' offense, and if he's not get scoring down low, uh, the Lakers are, are probably going to be struggling to score. Here and and on the other side, I mean, you do like the Clippers because the Lakers give up a, a, a ton of pain points, um, but and, and they should have the rebounding advantage as well. Lakers have been awful on the boards lately, but you don't expect the Clippers to to really win high scoring games. We've talked a lot about their home road splits. They score just one hundred six at home, uh, just a one ten offensive rating, and they've gone under in sixteen of their last nineteen at home. That's pretty much the entire season. Uh, the the overs again against Houston, which did not even get to this total, and an over against Charlotte with a 106 pace. So as long as the pace is is where it usually is, where the Clippers like to dictate it, I think when Kawhi's healthy, they like to slow it down and let him operate in the half court. 
Uh, it was just a 94 pace in, in their previous six home games before that or, or around that Charlotte game. Um, then I don't think we get to 230 here. Uh, I know it's been bet down a little bit and might continue to get bet down, in which case I think you you might want a teaser or you can go to FanDuel where um, you know it freezes the line at 231 with the money line. And then the odds might just adjust a little bit. But otherwise, I think you're still getting plus 160 for Clippers to win with the under. Yeah, I think for this game, I'm just sticking with that. Uh, well, I mean, I really do actually like the Clips a bit in this one. I think it's it's a good moment for them. And no matter what you do, you're still the little brother uh, and the away team inside your own arena when you play the Lakers. Um so, you know, I think there's there's at least motivation for them and, and Kawhi and PG uh, when they're playing together here. Yeah, then I think that, you know, you, you can expect um, them to take advantage of those moments, right? Like knowing that they're probably going to sit Kawhi another like 10 times before this season is out, whether he's injured or not, um, if it's a back to back or otherwise. So, uh, you know, the matchup itself, though, I, I do like the under and, and that's kind of my preferred bet on this one. And, and the thing I will actually probably lay some money down on here because one, I mean, look at the way that they've been playing each other already this season. Uh, and two, yeah, it's everything that kind of starts with the Lakers. I mean, the Clippers are going to clip. They're going to play at, you know, a bottom five pace in the league. They're going to do their best to lock you up uh, all over the wing. And then, you know, from there, it's just a matter of getting defensive rebounds uh, because they do limit points in the paint to a, to a pretty decent amount, especially over the last few weeks or so. Uh, they've been in the top five in terms of limiting points in the paint. And that's where the Lakers are scoring all season. So if you just if you get back against the Lakers, um, and and you don't and you force them to set up a half court offense uh, that you know is stagnant at times, mostly because there's no three point shooting. Then you go ahead and get that total because the, their efficiency in the fast break is really good, um, and their efficiency in the half court is really bad. So it's not surprising that they often play at this 104 pace. But they're down to like you said. I mean, even in, in their last seven games or so, where what six of them have gone under, um, you know, their pace is still at it's 100. So if they were the Clippers, we'd be saying they're playing all the way at 100 but they're the Lakers so we're saying they're playing all the way down at 100 um, and at, with that lack of pace comes you know a lot more half court offense um, there's no second chance points uh, the points in the paint really come from LeBron and, Re and Russ driving um, and, and prefer pre preferably driving in transition as we know um, and, and so you know where's the offense coming from besides that the second chance points have actually been a little bit better for them uh, over the last couple of weeks because Wenyan Gabriel uh, has come in and actually been a pretty nice uh, you know, offensive rim attacker, if you will, uh, a la sort of like a, you know, rim runner in, to a degree, but got a lot of strength as well. And then, you know, Thomas Bryant, when he's when he's actually out there, uh, has, has been really good for them as well. Slow down a bit. But the point is on those second chance points, um, you know, for for the clips, that's also something else that they, you know, that they, they limit really well. Um, and like I said, they do gobble up defensive rebounds at a super high rate. So that, that's why they're able to keep teams from from, uh, you know, getting up, getting up on those uh, second chance points. So, yeah, I think overall, the, the way that this matchup works out and, and what we've seen from these teams, even when they played, you know, keeping it to below like 115 or 215 totals each time, uh, mostly because of that slow pace. And, and obviously it's in the same arena every time. So we don't have to talk about splits of any kind in terms of home road. Um, and I think we know what we're going to get in this building. And, and the one time that you've seen sort of an offensive explosion uh, between these two teams, which was roughly like three matchups ago last season, uh, that was just, you know, the Lakers were a, a different team entirely. Like Dwight Howard was starting in that game. So, um, you know, that that was a different time for, for them. And, and I think at this point, what we we know about what they've been playing like in the last two weeks is what we should expect now they're this they're that team uh and, and i think 230 is way too high and I, everyone's been on that with us and i think you can get this down to like 228 before i start feeling uncomfortable about an under on it yeah i mean they're the clippers are a completely different team there's no paul george or Kawhi in that game um Kawhi's missed the last four matchups where they've still won and and while we've said you know he's not the same kind of defender as he was in his prime at this point. Uh, I mean, he can still ramp it up and, and the Clippers are starting to ramp it up. I like that you were like, this is a good moment for them. I, I mean, they are starting to at least respond to some of the noise that look or, or just internally be like, look, we got to start trying here. Yeah. We've lost like 10 of 11 yeah. and we're going to fall into the play in. Um, and this is a good opportunity to get three straight wins. This is normal rest and a day off tomorrow versus then they host the Spurs, which is an easier one. The Lakers front end of a back to back, they have to host the Spurs tomorrow. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it is a spot where the, the Lakers, of course, want to snap this losing streak to the Clippers, but they just don't have the same depth of personnel. 
um, especially when you have those t- those two guys at the top opening everything up. And again, going back to the way that the, the, the Clippers can close here to keep us under the total, they just held Dallas to 19 points in the fourth quarter. They held Luka under 50% shooting. Uh, Luka, I, I think, you know, right up there with LeBron in terms of tough guy to guard and tough guy who just does everything for the opposing offense. And to be able to, to execute a good game plan against right. him, I think, is, is very indicative of what Tyron Lue and company will be able to do to slow down LeBron um, and keep the Lakers from going on another one of these absurd runs. And, uh, yeah, 91 pace is the is what the Lake, the Clippers' previous four have been. Granted, that one of those against Dallas who are happy to slow it down. But like I said... The Lakers have been slowing it down. They're at 99 in, in, in term, or 96 in their last four home games, like I said, before that Memphis game. Yeah, and that's how they're going to play with, with Paul George and Kawhi. They know that they can score um, you know, pr- pretty easily in the half court with those two guys playing at the same time. Um, and the fact that there's always one of them on the court, the way they stagger their minutes, also means you're not going to get um, you know, necessarily a, a break in the style of play. When, when Kawhi's out there, it's a little bit slower. Uh, sometimes PG does tend to get you know, the defensive rebound and go, but uh, this is another example of, of what, you know, a matchup that leads to an under uh, in terms of you know, opponent fast break points. The Lakers do a super good job of getting back as well second fewest uh, allowed in the last uh, seven games that they've played and you know not that the uh, we're expecting too many fast break points coming from those clips but I'm just saying that also helps you keep it slower the way that the Lakers have been getting back so yeah under 232 was a good start to this one when it opened I think 230 is still a good spot to get it so hopefully you can find some good value by the time you're seeing this and that is all the time we have for you so make sure to like and subscribe to that page continue to follow along with us we've got another game video and our player props up for you tonight so until we see you next happy betting